The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from USAopoly. Hello and welcome to another Christmas episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad, or little John McClain. I'm Megan the Daughter, or Hans Gruber. Because we are playing Die Hard from The Op, and everybody knows Die Hard is a Christmas movie, right? Die Hard is not a Christmas movie! Stop saying that! See? Yeah, we're going to discount that. But uh, this is a game where it's a one versus many, where, like I said, I'm going to be John McClane. Megan's going to be representing all of the bad guys. Yes. And we are going to try to, well, John's got his own objectives. Mm -hmm. He wants to kill Hans. There, you know, go boo-boo. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. No. Uh, so I'm going to try to kill Hans. Hans is actually going to try to open the safe yes. to get all the money or kill John McClane, whichever right. comes first. <laughs> so uh, watch our playthrough and then hear what we got to say about it. John McClane is going to win if he kills Hans. The bad guys are going to win if they can crack the safe, and that's all six, and then the final seventh lock, and they get all the money. Now they have to get to Act 3 uh, for both of these things to happen. We're going to start with Act 1, and you can see we've got a pretty small size board. We've got John McClane starting over here. We've got the bad guys in green. And then we've got various tokens out on the board that are going to provide us at least uh, John McClane. There's going to be a machine gun and a radio. The uh, bad guys are going to try to find some of the party goers and take them as hostages. They want to find three. So that is this one up here. They're also going to track John McClane. And they can do that by having two of their guys stand on two of the uncovered red spots on the board. John McClane's tokens are red, bad guys are green. It's kind of the theme throughout the whole game, red and green, Christmas colors, right? The other objective that John McClane has is he has to find shoes that don't fit. And the way he's gonna do that is the first of the bad guys that he takes out, uh, they're basically going to drop their shoes. John's gonna go over, he's gonna get those. And then once John McClane has all of his objectives, he's going to go over here where it says McClane goal, and he's going to try to get out of there. So let's talk about how the bad guys are going to be able to open the safe. On a turn, the bad guys are going to have three cards, and they're going to arrange them in numeric order. The first and last card in that group is going to provide uh, basically combinations for the lock. So in this case, we have 7, 15, and 17. We're going to look at these white numbers here. They're both 7s. Now we're going to look at the lock cards. And in this example, we only have one 7. So Megan would be able to put one of the blue cubes on the 7 to show that that lock has been uh, taken care of. Now if these, uh, if there were two 7s on the lock cards that were next to each other, she'd be able to actually put down two on the locks. Now how Megan is going to get those three cards, she's going to start with a hand of three cards to begin with, and then she's going to uh, turn over one card. She's going to put one card face down. Those are going to be from the deck. And then she's going to pick a card from her hand. She's going to try to see if she can get as many of those lock combinations as possible. John McLean, on the other hand, he is going to start with a hand of five cards. And you're going to see he has different acts on here, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Now, uh, in Act 1, he's obviously only going to use the Act 1 abilities. In Act 2, uh, for Act 2, and Act 3 for Act 3 as well. But the cards that he plays are going to be able to be carried forward into the various acts. So that's when these are going to come into play in the later acts. And we'll talk you through what each of the um, actions do. But one of the things we can do is if we choose either not to use an action that we have in our card or we can't use it, we can always use that as a move one. We do have some spots on the board where you see these green tokens that are kind of a darker gray. A lot of them are like computer desks and such. Whenever we do a movement action, that takes a move two in order to move in between there or into those spots. And then that also increases 
uh, any combat that we do by a plus one because when we do a shoot or a punch or a shove, it's going to give us a number and a plus. So that's what we have to roll on our die in order to resolve that combat. If one of us is within one of these spots on the board, then we have to add that. So a three plus would become a four plus. Last thing I didn't really talk about is whenever the bad guys hurt John McClane, either through a punch or a shoot, they're going to be able to place a cube on this draw blood uh, card. And basically, whenever they fill that up, they're going to get a reward. In this case, it's going to be two lock actions. That means they can take a cube and they can put it on any of the numbers that they want on the lock. Then that is going to clear and they'll try to fill it up again. That is the one thing that will carry through between the acts. Uh, John McClane also has a radio that he'll use in the later acts as well. So John McClane always gets to go first. So we're going to choose our cards simultaneously. And then John McClane will resolve his actions. And then the thieves will resolve theirs. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a move three. And I can do these actions in any order. I'm going to go one, two, three. And then instead of doing a recover one, which allows me to take the top card of my discard and put it in my hand, I'm going to use that as a move one and move into this space. And this is a hazard, and that means that I take damage. So I'm going to have to lose the top card of my draw deck. So that's my turn, and it goes over to the bad guys. All right, so I have a three and a nine. Uh, those are together, so I can go ahead and lock those. Um, and then I have three move threes. So I'm going to do one, two, three. And that's a hostage. Um... And then we'll do one, two. Can't do the three to move in there, but we'll use that other move three to move into that space, and that's a dud. So that's all right. So Megan will discard all her cards, and she'll draw back to three cards. John McClain actually does not get to draw up until he only has two cards remaining. Then he discards those two cards, and he draws a new hand of five. All right, so I'm going to do a move three. I will go one, two, three, and I will forego my shoot five to be a move one so I can move into this space. And I now have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. So the machine gun allows me to add an extra shoot four plus action, but I'm limited by the number of bullets I have. I start off with three, and in the later acts, I'll be able to find other ammunition. All right. Um, I have a one and a three. Those are not by each other, so I'll just do the one there. And I have three move threes again. Um, so I can go one, two, three, one, two, three, which is another dud. And then one, two, which is another dud. So at least I know those other two are my other hostages. All right, mine is not that great. Mine is just a sneak three. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Now, when I do a sneak action, there's a couple of things that kind of kick in. One, I can't be hurt um, through a shoot action or a punch action. I also uh, can move through bad guys if they're in my way. I just can't finish my turn on their spot. It also gives me uh, instead of having to do a move two into the dark areas there, I can do it as just a regular move. Um, so I have a five and a seven. Those are together right up top there. You're flying through the lock. I do pretty good on the locks. Um, so I have a move three, punch three, shoot four. So you snuck. So I can't really do anything. I was sneaking. Yeah. Um... So we'll do the one, two, three. It's the move three. So that's a hostage. Um, can't really punch or shoot. So I'll just do a move one. And then I'll move that guy one. Yeah. I only have two cards left. Those get discarded. And I draw up a new five. Right. I'm going to do a move two. I'm going to go one, two. 
And then I have a punch three plus. So I'll hold it. Miss. Six. So this guy now has been punched. So why is he out just Be from the punch? Because as they told us in the Gen Con uh, demo, you know, these 80s villains, they had glass jaws, basically. You know, you hit them once and they're they're done. So shoes go there. Okay, is that it for you? That is it. All right, I have a seven and a five. So no more sevens left. So I'll put the five there. I have a move three, move three, shoot four. So I think I'm going to do... So I can do one, two, and away. Yeah, so in shooting... You have to have at least one mm -hmm. space in between, and you have to basically be uh, in alignment. And I missed because it was a shoot four. Um, oh, that's too bad. Mm. Um, and then I have another move three, so we're just going to go... Mm. You could get into, you could do that for the I three. could, yeah. One, two, three. And that's going to be your third. Yep. So now you're going to get two lock actions. Yes. So that actually completes my first lock. Okay. Yeah. So we move down on the card and it shows lock two is still two cards. So. Okay. okay. Uh, instead of doing a shove two, I'm going to do it as a move one and I'm going to move to this space here. So I've completed the shoes that are too small and... I got another hazard, which got to get rid of another card. I think so. I was hoping to be able to finish that off. Nope. So I have a one and a seven. Those are together. Um, and then move three, move three, punch three. So let's do one, two. And it's a punch three. Punch three. Which is a miss again. Um, and it's another move three. That's unfortunate. It's mm -hmm. not what I wanted you to do. So sorry. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use my uh, momentum. I'm going to move two, one, two, and I'm going to do a shove two plus. Miss. Dang it. So I just shoved you. When you shove, they either go uh, back or one to the side. So let's just go ahead and put you there. Okay. So I have two ones, which are not together. Well, we only have one one, so there's that. Um, I have another lock action on my card. So I'll just put that on my three there. And then I have a move three, move three. So let's do one, two, three, one. And I am on two uncovered red spaces. So I have track John McLean. I get two lock actions. So give me that. Yeah. All right. Again, only two cards left. Discard those, draw five. Okay. okay, I have a move three and a punch four. So I'm going to use that punch four as a move one. I'm going to move into here and get my radio so I can talk to my buddy, Sergeant Al Powell. He likes Twinkies, you know. He does. And then I have a move three. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. I have a seven and a five. Oh, I have left those five there. Uh, I have a punch three, shoot four, shoot four. So... I'm just going to forgo all of those and bring back my other dude. Yeah, that's the reinforcement. So, yeah, so if you decide you don't want to do any of your actions for the thieves, they can then bring one guy back mm -hmm. and he comes in on one of the green spaces. Now, uh, in order to do that, you already have to have guys that uh, are less than what you start with. Yeah. Act one, you start with three, so that's why she was able to do that. You ready? Yep. I'm going to do a move two, which is going to be a one, two, and then I'm going to do a shoot four. Miss. That yeah. is a four. So that guy goes bye bye That's it. All right. I have two nines, but I only need one to finish that second lock there. Did you have that one lock covered in the corner? Yeah. Okay. They're all covered. All right. So we move on. Three cards now. All right, and I have a move, shoot, shoot. Um, so let's move this guy one, two, three. Give up a shoot. No, no, that won't work because then I still won't be in line of sight. One, two, three. 
Uh, you know what? We'll just bring that guy back okay. again. I'm going to do a sneak three, which is just going to be one, two, three. We have two nines, which are not together, so I'll just put that one there. Move three, move three, shoot four, which I can't do anything. If I stand there, can I block you? Yes, you can. One, two, and then we'll just move that guy one, and we'll move that guy. Okay. So they're doing something. So only two cards left. Discard those. Draw five. Okay. I'm going to do a move two, which oh, I'm only going to do a move one. To there and then I'm going to do a punch three. Miss. Yay. Oh, I missed. You did miss. That was not good. All right, so I have a three and a three. They're not together. Um, and I just have three move options. So let's do one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, I've got a punch four. Miss. Damn it. So punch him and he's out of my way. And then I have a move three. So I move to my goal. Now what John McLean does is he actually goes off of the board at that point. Now Megan can do her lock actions. She's already done her other objectives. So yeah. if she hadn't already done that, she could go for those as well. I have a one and a nine though that are together. So I'll just put that there. All right, so now we're ready to move on to act two. So what we do is John McLean takes the cards that he has in his hand, his draw pile and his discard pile, and those are now out of the game. He will take the cards that he has played. So how many of those did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, which is about average. And I'm going to mix those with the uh, act two cards. And you'll see that the Act 2 cards look like this, where they don't have anything in the Act 1. So I'm going to shuffle those together. Um, Megan will carry forward the Draw Blood. I will carry forward my machine gun and my radio here. Um, the locks will stay the same, but we will unfold the board into Act 2. And then we'll get that set up with all of the new objectives and tokens. John McLean's objectives for Act 2 is he has to find the detonator and explosives. And once he does that, then he has to basically throw those down the elevator shaft. They blow up the elevator shaft. The elevator shaft is right there. So once he finds those two, then he makes his way over there. He also has to throw a guy out the window. So the first guy that he takes out is going to basically fall over on his current spot. John McLean's got to go over into his spot, and then he's basically going to drag his body over to one of the windows. And you'll see these areas here are marked by uh, lines. Those represent the windows. And he throws the body out onto Al Powell's car. Might, you know, jar him a little bit. Poor guy. Poor guy. He, he crushed his he Twinkies. He not deserve any of this. Now, uh, Megan's objectives is she wants to shoot the glass. She's got five of these broken glass tokens, and she's going to place those on the board. And I don't know how well these are showing up, but there's outlines around there that show where those places go. Now, this is an important part because when we first started playing this game, we were playing this wrong. I had to talk to one of the game designers to get this cleared up. This black line right here is really the window pane. And... You have to follow the normal shoot rules, but you also have to basically be uh, perpendicular to that. You do the shoot action, then you get to place those in the spots. You can walk through where the green is at, but you just can't walk across where that black is until they have shot the glass and that covers that black spot up. Now, 
The bad guys can walk freely through the broken glass because they're wearing shoes. John McClane is not wearing shoes, so he will take damage uh, in the form of losing a card if he walks on that. Also, if he is inside one of these uh, green areas when that glass gets shot, he will take damage as well. There's uh, the other objective that Megan has is she has to blow up the police tank. Yes, the police have an RV. So you can see that's going to give her three lock actions. So that's pretty cool. Now, there are two rocket launcher positions on the board. One here, which is an even. One over there, which is odd. So if Megan has one of her guys there, she can use a shoot action, roll the die. And if it's an even, then that hits the tank and it uh, basically clears that objective. If she has guys on both of those spots and does a shoot action, it's an automatic hit. Again, we have the uh, vents that go from one side of the board to the other. Only John McClain can travel through the vents. However, Megan can stand on the vents to prevent John McClain from going through there. Uh, just as kind of a strategy that kind of blocks his movement. Uh, once John McClain clears all of his objectives, he wants to get over to this spot to go on to Act 3. Now... I've got my deck all set up. I'm going to be drawing five cards. Megan is going to be drawing uh, cards normally to clear the locks. All right. I'm going to do a move four and a punch four. So I'm going to go... Um, do I want to do that? Let's... Yeah, let's do this. Let's go one, two, three, four. Now, my punch four becomes a punch five. Yes. And I got a five. So they fall down, go boom. Is that it? That's it. And I have a one and a seven. Those are together in two places. I need my lock. Um, so I can do move three, punch three, shoot four. And I go one, two, three. And then punch. Was a three. That's a three. So you get a bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not gonna do the shoot four action. Okay. Okay. Right. I will do a instead of doing my punch four plus, I'm gonna use that as a move one. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna collect that body, and it says that I put it on that just to show that I'm dragging his little carcass around. And then I have a move four. So I will go one, two, three, and just stop there. And since I'm next to a window, I'm going to throw his body out. And now he's available for Megan if she decides she wants to do a reinforcement action. And I flip that objective over. All right. Uh, I have a one and a seven again. Those are together. Um, and I have punch, shoot, shoot. Okay, so let's not do the punch. We'll move that guy one so he's facing you. Don't shoot me. Thank you. Don't shoot me again. Oh, <laughs> you usually get so lucky on those rolls. No, sucking at it tonight. All right, I'm going to do a sneak three and just go one, two, three. In the vent? Or... Nope, I'm okay, not Okay, I didn't vent. know. Oh, yeah, because you just jump over, right? Yeah. A uh, seven and a five. Those are not together, but I'll put that five down there. Move three, move three, shoot four. So let's do... And when you shoot the glass, you don't have to roll because it says they're not going to miss the big pane of glass. Yeah. Where are you Unless they're stormtroopers. Okay. You can't shoot me. I snuck. <sighs> well, okay. So <laughs> one, two, three. That was a sneaky guy. Well, all right. So I'll just move one there. Actually, no. Back there. Yeah, to so move, we'll... move what? Move three. Yep. Yeah. So you shot the glass. Shoot the glass, and then... Another move three, so we'll just move this guy one, two. Okay. 
Two cards left, discard those, draw five. Okay. okay. I'll do a move two, which is gonna be one, two. And that gives me a support action. So that allows me to add it to my radio. And um, when I fill those up, the first two spots are zeros, uh, but then the next three spots are plus ones and the last spot is a plus two. Those are things I get to add to my combat rolls. So that is nice. The last thing I have is a shoot four. So John is gonna shoot that guy across there. Yes. I missed, but I made a mess. So five and a seven, do seven, eight, um, I have a shoot four. We'll see if I can do that. You're shooting me? Yeah. Nope, I'm not. Um, and then we'll do one, two. I have a punch. Don't punch me in the face. Can you not talk? <laughs> and maybe I'll do something correctly. Alright. I'm going to do a punch four. I did miss. And then I have a move three, so I'm gonna go one, two, three. There's a wall of glass between us. Okay. But if you shoot the glass, I'm gonna get hurt. Okay. Uh, well, I have a five and a three. All I need is a three. So that one is on Yeah, top. you got a five still up there in the corner. Oh, all right, so I have five and a three. So I'll just lock that there. Um, so I'm going to move back one. I have a shoot four. Hopefully I can shoot that and hurt you, which I can. Uh oh, so, um, actually you didn't shoot me. You shot, shot the, the glass. You yeah. shot the glass, but you don't get to uh, add a sorry. cube there. Well, I hurt you though. Yeah, but that just means I, that just means I get rid of the card. Mm. So you don't, yeah, you don't get to actually and add the thing. another. There. Move three. So I think I'll do one, two, three. Okay. Okay. So instead of doing my shoot five, I'm going to do a move one to go here. And I found the detonator. And then I have a move three. I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. I have a one and a nine, which don't do me any good. I have a punch, shoot, shoot. Man, I forgot to get that one. I was mm -hmm. too focused on uh, mm -hmm. throwing the guy. I'll forgo my punch, move that guy there. And now, are you going to shoot me or are you going to shoot no, the I'm tank? I'm going to shoot you. Because it would be an automatic uh, on the tank since you're standing well, both of those things. I have two shoot, tanks. so let me try shooting you first. I need a hit. And then I'll use that other shoot to do that. And that gives you three, three locks. Three locks. So wow. then just one there clears that lock. It's lock number four is three cards. I still have two more. So we'll just drop that there. <clears throat> and that's that. Okay. So I have two cards left. Get rid of those. Draw five. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a move three, which is actually just going to be one go there. And I got bullets from my machine gun. And then I have a punch three. Miss. Damn it. Okay, That's it. Three and a nine. They're not together. So I'll put down the three. And I have three move threes. Yeah, that's not a bad thing to do when you don't really, can't really use those actions very well. Right. I'm going to do a sneak four and a support one. So I have to add one to my radio. And the sneak four, uh, let's just go one, two, three, four. Oh, you snuck. I snuck. So no touchy. A one and a nine. Put those there. And then another move three, move three, move three. 
Let's do Always bring another guy in. This guy. One, two, three. And that guy there. I'll just add this guy right there. I'm going to do a recover one, so I'll get to take the top card of my discard and put it in my hand. Then I have a move three. So let's go um, one, two, three. And hopefully you don't shoot me. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm going to punch you. So one. Did you do your lock? And I can't do them. Both ones. So you're punching what? Three. Again. Yep, that should be double. Because it's six. Alright. I will do a punch four. No, you won't. No, you won't. Yeah. So he's punched. And then I have a move three, so I'm going to go one, two, three, and unfortunately that's a hazard, so. Okay, a seven and a nine, I'm going to put the seven down, um, and then move one, two, three, punch three, that's a two, punch three, that's a one, so that adds to three. I don't think that's sure how it works. That should work. Alright, so two cards left, draw five. Alright. I have a move three and a shoot five, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, and forego the shoot to so move one and bullets. Now nah, this is coming back to haunt me. I should have done that one. Three and a seven, so I'll put the three there. Um I'm going to shoot the glass there and then forgo my punch to move one and then try to shoot you there. Oh, you got the oh. glass there. So you can shoot the glass if you wanted. Then you'd only have one yeah, thing of glass I'll left. Do that. And then you can shoot me on a subsequent turn. I'm going to attempt to do a shoot five on that guy. It's a shoot five? Yeah. Jeez. And I missed. Yay. Was he there or there? He was on that, yeah. On that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I have a move three, so I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. The three and three, which don't do me any I've ran good. a circle yep. around this floor. And I have a... Move three, one, two, and then we're going to try to punch you. Punch what? Three. And then, one, two, back there. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a move two, one, two, and then I have a punch three. Nice. <sighs> I have a seven and a nine, so there's a nine. Uh, move three, punch three, punch three. You're right there. So punch three. And punch three. Yeah, that should be two. And that's going to be my thing. If it's a six, it should automatically be two hits. Uh, and then I had a move three. We're just going to move that guy there. Okay. I'm getting rid of my two, drawing five. I'm getting dangerously close again to where you always beat me. Yep. I have a shove two, so I shove you, shove you back that way. Okay. And then I have a move three. And I'll just move on to there and get the explosives. I have a three and a nine. They're not together though, so I'm gonna 
Put it on the nine. Move, move, punch. Well, you're right beside me, so let's try to punch you. I punch you. And that completes my draw blood objective there. So then I get two lock actions. So we'll just drop those there. Um, and then I have one, I have two moves. Because he didn't move. So let's do one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Oh, wait, I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, he's here. Okay, shot. So let's do one, two, three, and then. Uh, we're just gonna put him on the elevator, that, or the vent. That way, that blocks him away. You know, stinker butt. Yeah, and then I still have another move. So one, two, three. That way, he can. Oh no, that guy can make it. One, two, three. That guy can do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have a support one so i'm going to add that here so now i have a plus one when i do stuff i have a recover one so i get to put a card back into my hand and i have a move three so i'm going to go one two three i have a five yay so that completes lock number four Jeez, this is not looking good so you usually fly through the locks pretty quick i do though. pretty well in the locks yeah Okay. Um, and I have move, move, move. So I move one, two, three. And yeah, he'll just hang out there. Actually, you know what? No, it's not. It's just. Oh, no, we'll put him there since he's trying to go that way. Mm -hmm. Aha, that's good. Good for that. Okay. I'm going to do a move three, which is going to be one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forego my shove and do a move one. So then I have a shoot four. Miss. So he's gone. You just brought him back. And I am going to also use my machine gun to do a shoot four on that guy. Mm, yeah. Ah. Okay, I have a one and a nine. Those are together. And then I have the shoot uh, four, which that's a hit. Um, let's see. Okay. And it really. I'm not gonna win. <laughs> Good. Let's do one, two, three, just to move that guy, and then. Can't really do the punch, so we'll just move him one more closer to you. Uh, I have one action left. I'm gonna lose. Play it out. All right, so I'm doing a sneak three, which is just one, two, three. That's all you can do? That's all I can do. Wow, I have a three and a five right there. Um, we have a move three, so we'll just bump him up. And you can't hit me. I can't hit you. Because I, I was a sneak. I don't know. It ain't gonna matter. Punch, punch. That's not very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So I discard the cards. Now, I have only two cards left. If I would have had three, I could have drawn all those cards up. However, when you only have two cards left, John McClane suffers a fatal injury. And he is dead. So he died hard. He did die hard. So let's award Megan the die hard trophy. So what really killed me was the fact that when I killed this guy here, 
And I was so focused on throwing him out the window that I really forgot to pick up that token. And I really should have done that because I ended up wasting a lot of moves just to get back around to do that and then try to get back to that. It's kind of like kind of what normally ends up happening. I end up stalling you on Act 2. Yeah. And then killing you. But I did have more cards that I carried through from Act 1, which I think it helped me a little bit. It just kind of prolonged it a bit. Yeah. So since we did not get to play Act 3, what we're going to do is we're going to show you kind of how Act 3 is set up, talk about what the uh, objectives are and so forth. And that way you'll get a, an idea of how Act 3 should play. But I think you did get a really good idea of, you know, the whole movement around, uh, the shooting and, and all of that. So, yeah, let's just show you what Act 3 looks like. Okay, for Act 3, John has three objectives. First thing he's got to do is he has to, whoops, he has to get the hostages off the roof. Now, the way he's going to do that is he has to basically uh, be up here on the roof and he has to have line of sight and do a shoot action. When he does a shoot action, they are going to move one space towards stairs. So he can keep going, and as long as he's on that side, he's gonna push these over there. Once he gets them to a stairs, then that objective is done. Let me run away. His next objective is to use the fire hose and basically swing down to where Hans is at. So, yeah. What he has to do is he has to get down next to these windows, oh, yeah. and these windows have number or have letters uh, assigned to them. So let's just say he was on H, and he did the swing action. You can see he's going to come down there because that is where H is at. And then finally, what he has to do to win is basically uh, kill Hans Gruber. So happy trails, Hans. You know he's going to basically shove and uh, shoot. Hans, here, he has to get him next to a window marked uh, thing there, and then Hans goes out the window, because it's not Christmas until Hans Gruber falls off the Nakatomi Plaza That's building. That's debatable. Pretty debatable. Uh, anyway, my objectives, though, uh, still working on drawing some blood, finish opening this lock, and then blow up the roof so that the power cuts then I get all the money. Yay! And the way she blows up the roof is there are spots so you can see where these tokens are at. Mm -hmm. So basically in order she just has to have one of the thieves go to it. And this is... That's number one. Oh, that's this two. One. So one, two, is that three? Three, four. And four. So once she does that and the thieves can move off of that they just basically have to... End up there. They're, they're set in the detonators. Mm -hmm. So once all four are set in order then the roof blows the safe opens and you're on a beach somewhere earning 20%. Nice. So that is how you play Act 3. Um, we've never gotten to that. No, because you keep killing me in Act 2. So I get the uh, trophy. I've acted, you will get the trophy. Yeah. But I have actually played Act 3 with my lunch group because they have done, or Megan has done something that they have not been able to do, and that is to prevent me from getting to Act 3. Um, I used to killing you. <laughs> when, we, when we played Act 3, uh, I got... To within two spaces of having Hans next to a window uh, and I lost because I forgot I had a fully loaded machine gun and forgot to keep shooting Hans to move him back one space uh, but yeah that, that was on me so. all right so as the lone wolf John McClane in this scenario I'll go first um, but he's dead he died hard he did die hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, he, and he keeps dying hard. He'd die yeah. hard, too. Three that, and four That's five. That's the next game I'm waiting for, is them to do die hard, too. Um, I think this was this. successful enough that they probably could. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really enjoy this game, and I've joked that this is a Christmas game, but this is a game that I would play any time of the year. Uh, because this movie is not a Christmas it movie. Is, it is. It can be drop played any time. Hush, child. <laughs> so um, I really enjoy the gameplay. I like how this unfolds if you uh pardon the pun of going from act one act two and act three that is really cool i've not seen that in any game before so i think that is a really uh innovative mechanism that they have instead of having three different boards you just keep it all yeah it plus is kind of cool what that allows you to do is you kind of have a save option there mm -hmm. because it makes it real easy to oh you know what we're going to sit down we're going to play act one right now yeah uh and then i can easily see and save the game state and then when we pick it back up, we say, okay, we're going to uh, start with Act 2 now. Uh, 
and then play through that and then like I said go to act three if we can make it that far um, but I, I usually don't like one versus many games um, and I have always every game I've played of this have been John McClane nobody wants to be John McClane so I end up always being John McClane uh, which I don't mind because I, I find it uh, you know I want to be the hero but at some point I do want to play as the uh, the thieves just to to be on that side because even the demo at Gen Con I was John McClane. You were. But, I didn't uh, want to be Snape. You want to be Snape. Um, <laughs> I, get I, to, I get to take you out. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I, I like the fact that the mechanism of the cards how you have different actions in Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 and that's a, a very uh, strategic thing you got to do is figure out which cards you want to bring forward into the next act. Uh, so like this one, you know, it's a move two and a punch three, but they're going to get stronger as you progress throughout the game. So it then becomes a move three, a punch three, and also a punch four. So uh, I think that's also a really uh, unique and very cool mechanism that they have in the game. I said the game is very thematic. It is. You are really going mm -hmm. through um, through the movie. I understand it now that we watched the movie the other night, so... I finally get all the quotes and the whole plot of this game. Yeah, the only thing that is, is a little off is that they didn't cut the power because they blew up the roof. No. Because uh, the FBI guys cut the power, then they got into choppers, yeah. and then they got blown up. Yeah. So a little bit out of order there, but that's okay. Um, that would have to be like a whole other element, the FBI getting involved and all. Yeah, I do want to point out, we do have a lot of red and green, which are Christmas colors. And I did bring that up, even at the demo. I was like, did you guys have to do that? They're like, yeah, because it's a Christmas game. I was like, oh, man. Like, everyone at that table was all in agreement, and I was the lone wolf there. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, you know, the lock mechanism. Whoops, that's really cool. I'm not even showing that, but show this. Yeah, this is this is really neat. And how the uh, the thieves work together mm -hmm. in uh, not, not talking, but knowing, yeah. you know, which cards are probably going to work the best because for their strategy? We couldn't talk when we did the demo. Yeah. Because we got yelled at by the demo guy. He's like, you guys can't talk. We're like, oh, no, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so it was kind of cool for that yeah. radio silence bit. Uh, so I'll let you talk about the gameplay now because you were very skeptical about I this. I was skeptical just because I was like, eh, I don't know. Kind of like you said, the one versus many. We don't play a lot of those games. Um, so I wasn't really sure. I was just kind of against a diehard game originally. Um, I did come away from the demo actually appreciating the gameplay of it, maybe not so much the IP attached to it, um, but I did think it's a really cool concept, and I still do. I think this game is really interesting, kind of like we said, how it unfolds. Um, I like how, like, the many aspects of, like, you know, if there is another player on the thief, like, you can still do that. You're still doing the same thing I did with the cards, except they're picking that card instead of it being, like, just one drawn off the top or just the one shown. Um, so I think that was kind of cool to kind of make it more of like a co-op on the thief side. But again, you're still not talking. Um, I don't know. I think it's cool. I like that there's the locking. Like you have to do the locks as well to kind of keep moving. Because you really don't have to worry about the other objectives as much. Um, I was pretty much only doing like the shoot the glass ones just because oh, I didn't really have anything else to do. And then it did help me um, if I would have completed it, get some lock actions as well. But I just kind of something else to do. I don't know. I think it's cool. Now that I've seen the movie, I get it. But, I mean, I didn't really care for the movie either. I just thought it was okay. I don't think it's that be-all and all. Yeah, you know, the, the flavor, basically the, um, the, cards the, names cool, of the names of the cards, I think, you know, they're really nice. I didn't call them out in the game yeah. uh, itself, but, you know, uh, some of these are, you know, are just basically actions, you know, run for it. But, you know, this is a quote from the movie. I'm just a fly in the ointment, Hans. Uh, and then, of course, there is... Uh, you know, we've got Just Like John Wayne, um, Kevin partial to Roy Rogers, you know, and yeah, there's a couple, that of, one. couple of them in there. <laughs> well, that's that the only just... one, I think, that says that. But kind of like for the Thiefs, though, um, it has those there's quotes Carl. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And the art, I think we ones. mentioned it in the unboxing. This is, you know, kind of... Um, you know, almost shadowy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it, noir. It, it's and it shows this like record, like you're looking through a um, security footage. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's kind of cool. Just that small little touch there. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's a it's a good game. I'll give it that. I'm not saying it because it's Die Hard and it's good, but. So the one negative that I kind of had about what? the gameplay is, is 
um, when, yeah, throw the cards all over the place, is that when uh, you are in these spots here, so let's say John McClane is there, um, he still has to have added basically a plus one to whatever his uh, combat is. Mm -hmm. And I think that if he is there, he's kind of hiding in the, uh, in the stuff. So not necessarily sneak, but he shouldn't have to suffer the penalty yeah. of having that gray space there. Whereas um, if the, the bad guy is there, yes, he should have to have the plus one here. Yeah. But John shouldn't because, you know, he's not really hindered by it. He's within that stuff. Yeah. So that's just really kind of a minor thing. But that was really the only thing about the gameplay that I didn't like. Um, everything else I, I find to be really pretty cool, especially like, you know, if there's a, an ability or an action that you can't use, you can always turn it into a move mm -hmm. one. Or you can bring someone back if you don't like any of those actions. So like for the bad guys, you can bring a player back. Um, for you, you just drew another card up from your discard. But yeah. yeah, I mean, there's kind of ways to help you out. And I like how they, you know, the board is set up where, you know, we're talking about the, the different, uh, places on the in the building so like there's the 33rd floor and the roof uh here you've got the 30th floor it swings down yeah um so like i said it's just it oozes theme and i love die hard as a movie and this game was probably one of my most anticipated if not the most anticipated game i had okay. because um my buddy ross who works for the op he can tell you that as soon as i found out about this game i started bugging the heck out of him like <laughs> when's it coming out what you know for, share more information i gotta see you know what this game is about see that was me with all the harry potters and the kingdom hearts you were just like die hard die hard die hard yeah so <laughs> uh i think was it day one at gen con it's like i Re gotta plan. get and and demo that game because i knew the demos were going to fill up we did we signed up for this one this was our third demo at the op I do need to show off uh, little Hans here, so oh, you can see, little Hans. You can see he's got see, the walkie-talkie. He's, like he's all in black. He is all in black, so he's got the walkie-talkie and the gun. Um, and I think that the the minis are really kind of cool. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these there's not really a lot of definition, but you can see he's wearing a suit. You can see his tie. Um, John McClane, if you look close enough, you can see he's not wearing shoes. You see no, his you can see his little toes and his little tank top. Oops. John McClane fell down. Fell out a window? Yeah, see. So don't know if it's really showing up very well on camera there. But you can see the back. Or like Megan said, you can kind of see he's got his undershirt on there. You can see a little butt. that got shot off, All basically. Right. And then there's your, your bad guys. Your now hostages, all, you kept calling them. Yeah, I think they're all they're these all guys the are identical. Yeah. Uh, I think they're all supposed to look like Carl. Yeah, they have the long hair and all. Yeah. So I would recommend this game. Um, if you know anybody that's a diehard fan, uh, this would be an excellent Christmas present, although you're probably going to want to play this before Christmas. Okay. What do you think? It's a good game. I would recommend it. Um, maybe not if you're not into Die Hard, but I think it is a really good game overall. But, I mean, obviously, if you're a Die Hard fan, that's a bonus. I do have but, to yeah. say, this is my favorite one versus many game. Yeah. Um, I would, if it's anybody cool. said, hey, let's play one versus many, this is the game I'm going to go to. Uh, I don't even want to play any of the other ones. But, All no, right. I love this game. Definitely, I mean, it's I'm giving it two thumbs up. We like games from the op. So. All right, so that is Die Hard, the Nakatomi Heist board game, or we just like to call it Die Hard. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.